Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Minnesota Twins discussion video and in this one like yesterday's video when I talked about the three things that you have to see when you go to Target Field the three things I love about Target Field today is the opposite three places you should avoid that I don't really like about Target Field three things that you, you know what I'm saying here three things that you know just kind of offset the vibe of going to a Twins game so we're gonna start with one well the two kind of go together but the first one is the sun. So yesterday I said, oh, at night it is absolutely beautiful. You go up in the 316 section, way up there. I showed the picture of it, and you can see the sunset. It is absolutely beautiful. You know, you can see it through the gates out there. It shines on the skyscrapers and the landscape. It looks beautiful, and the sky is it's, it's awesome. But the one thing I do not like about it, the way the stadium is faced, it, it, it faces east, right? So it, it it's like directly east. So what that does is the stands and the outfield are facing directly west. What happens when during a 7 o'clock game? The sun goes down and the sun gets right into your eyes. So honestly, I mean... You got to pick or choose, right? One, The stadium's going to go one way or the other. I mean, you, you pick and choose. Do you want the sun coming into the batter's eyes uh, and, and, you know, everybody sitting behind home plate? Or do you pick and choose, go to the outfield? Honestly, I think the way target field is structured, if they would have angled it more this way, but I can see why they did it, but more, more north instead of east it would it would create a lot more of a different feel for where the sun is and it still would be in the player's eyes but obviously they wanted to get you know the what the skyline into the picture uh somehow so made it straight east another option would be to put it the other way so more south and then you'd be really looking at the skyline i'd honestly i do think that might be a little bit distracting uh and you know the way they did it so honestly the point of this is if you want to buy a ticket for the Twins game and you don't want to sit, you know, directly looking into the sun, don't sit. I think it's it's probably the worst in right center field. You've got the lower area, the Great Clips area in right field, and then there's some some seats that go from it's basically right to the right of the Great Clips area walking into the field. Um, and then there's a the whole gas station area, like I said yesterday. I would try to avoid that spot if uh, you don't like seeing the sun in your eyes. Otherwise, for a day game, it's pretty good. I mean, the sun's all over the place. Um, but that's that's probably one of my biggest concerns because when I sat out there um, in the, I don't know, I think it's like four rows in right center field on the main concourse level, not in the gas station superstar center, whatever it's called. Um, the sun gets right in your eyes. I mean, before it sets way up in the sky, and then as it goes down, there's a little crack. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's the concourse level. It's like one level above the concourse where there's a little strip of, uh, of sky. The sun goes right through there, and it's just blinding in your eyes. So that's number one. Number two kind of goes along with it. So how the seats are sectioned at Target Field, and you probably know this, is uh, it's like stacked on top of each other. So... You've got those like four areas, right? The four rows, what I just said in right field. Uh, and then you've got the gas station section, which is like right above it, right? And then you go over to the other side where there's the bleachers. And then right above it, there's another section. The only thing is about those sections is you cannot see the players uh, in the outfield. So the way it's structured is you've got, you've got your section here. Instead of it being a little bit over it, you see my shadow there? A little bit over it or I mean it would be this way so that you can see both of them it's right on top so that way if you're sitting up here you cannot see down low on the field and obviously they did that to try to get you as close to the action as possible the only thing is you're looking over a cliff and you can't see oh the ball's coming oh there it goes you know right it just disappears almost to the, the play you don't see it the player caught it uh, I mean like right at the warning track depending on where you're sitting you don't know where where it's gonna be So that's also another thing. I mean Unless you're sitting in that first row 
and then you can look like right over the edge you're not gonna see a little bit of the field and obviously the farther you go up the farther back you are you're not gonna see the field even more so again I really like sitting in that area way up top in 316 you're really close uh, I mean you're not really close but you're you get to see everything so that's probably number two again if you don't like sitting um, in the outfield don't if you do I mean those are just the concerns that I would have I mean you're not gonna catch a home run ball sitting behind home plate but you give and you take right I mean you've got to you've got to give up something if you want something else right so I mean that's just kind of my take on it those are the two things that I just I just don't like sitting out in the outfield anymore because of that reason unless I'm in like the the bleacher section where I'm actually level to the field or in the great clip section where I'm way over on the side and I can turn and see everything so that's just kind of my take on it I want to know again where you guys like to sit though um, and if you see these problems if you've seen these problems anywhere else in the field uh, I, I you know I'd love to sh you know know and share that with other people so those are probably two of the biggest concerns I have uh, and obviously they can be avoided if you do want to sit behind home plate or somewhere in the you know behind in the, in the foul section uh, somewhere but again you're not gonna get a home run ball or or anything out there like that so those are the two biggest things I have um, for target field the third thing and this is kind of just a, a tedious thing but uh, low water fountains so geesh um, at least on the main concourse I guess up on the higher levels I think there's one almost at every bathroom um, but on the lower section at least the last time I was there they only have what two or three water fountains um, around the park so I think they have one one by this dugout one by this dugout and then one in center field um, they did not actually have water fountains um, when they opened the park in what 2010 uh, they they did not have water fountains you had to buy water but you know obviously that's Unrealistic, I think, for people to buy water uh, every time they would, you know, want a water, especially you know on a hot summer day in Minnesota. I mean, you think? I mean, obviously Texas gets hot, but Minnesota, man, it's South Dakota, Iowa, Nebraska. It gets so bipolar here. I mean, it's 30 degrees one day and 95 the next. But you know, so that's probably one of my biggest concerns is it's not more accessible around the park, and I just don't know if that's possible or or what because you'll go drinking fountain, drinking fountain. Okay, now I gotta go all the way around to get the other drinking fountain, or you know, depending on where you're sitting, you gotta walk quite a ways. You can't just go straight up uh, unless you want to, you know, pay five bucks for it. Even though the twins, I think, are paying like two dollars. I think they lowered all their prices, just like um, like Atlanta did for the Super Bowl. So that's great, but still, like, who wants to pay two dollars for water when there's water fountains, right? But why do you want to walk halfway around the stadium, especially when it's really hot? You know, um, I know Chicago. Uh, the Cubs when I went there they allowed you to bring in an empty water bottle because um, I was there last year uh, and it was like whew, it was 100% humidity and 90 degrees outside it was miserable the same day before when I was in uh, South Chicago for the White Sox game but they let you bring in a water bottle that was not full um, there were not a lot of drinking fountains there either but I mean that's just an idea I'm not sure if the twins do that or not um, I don't think they do. Uh, I mean, maybe they have changed in the last year or so uh, that I'm not aware of, but just more convenience for that. If you know you bring in a couple water bottles uh, and you can fill them up, um, or if they put more water stations around the field, that would be a great idea. Um, but like I said, I think they they're pretty good about that on the top levels. Um, honestly, I think there's one almost every every bathroom or every two bathrooms but on the on the main concourse at least from my memory i i can only remember two or three uh, water fountains so again just just little nitpicky things but i thought i'd throw them out there just in case you're wondering if, again if you haven't been to a twins game and you're just thinking oh you know i need to prepare you know where should i sit that kind of thing um just thought I'd throw my opinion out there. But again, I want to hear from you. You know, what are your concerns with Target Field? What are your likes? Make sure to check out that other video that I posted yesterday. But just again, my opinion. Uh, I do want to know what you guys think. But that's all I got for you today. Make sure to come back tomorrow. Leave a like. 
subscribe. And I think that's it. We'll see you tomorrow.